Holy crap. Hello my friends and welcome back to the video series where we showcase new and noteworthy Half-Life Alex mods. Today is all about custom maps. 13 creative and fun maps to play, all of them combined, adds up to over 6 hours of gameplay. Here we go. Club 17 is the Half-Life nightclub you've always wanted. Headcrab zombies on the dance floor with combined DJs driving the beats. At first, I thought this was just a silly experiment, but it actually surprised me and transformed into a legit spy mission with ingenious story elements. I highly recommend it. Playtime is about 15 minutes. Alex Plays Minecraft is rather self-descriptive. Enjoy a small Alex level set within a Minecraft world. There's a happy main level and a spooky subterranean level inside the mines. It's short, but it does have its own charm. I beat it in about eight minutes. Last one. Half-Life 2, D2, underscore, prison, underscore, zero, four. Yeah, that's actually the name of the map. But to be fair, it perfectly describes what it is. That's the name of the original Half-Life 2 map that this is a port of. The environments of this map might provide some nostalgia for you as you blast away at waves of combine infesting the prison. The start of the map provides you with all the weapons and lots of resin for upgrades as well. The map author still has more plans for this in the future, but for now, it feels like we're one tiny step closer to playing Half-Life 2 in the Alex engine. I got about 10 minutes of play out of this map. Spaceport is based off the Halo 3 multiplayer map known as Orbital, and it's been transformed into a unique space adventure. It features custom props and puzzles, and also has a dynamic Halo soundtrack. But of course, even though you're in space, you're still running into headcrabs and combine. There's just no avoiding these guys. Playtime is about 30 minutes, and it's a nice refreshing take on Half-Life Alex maps. City 17 Breakout Alex is on a mission to attack a Combine outpost to steal a dropship to escape the city. Out of the gate, let me just say this is the best custom map I've played thus far. The level layouts are unique and refreshing. The puzzles are challenging, but not too hard. There's just enough searching and uncertainty to make you curious on how to progress, but not so much that it gets frustrating and you'll even encounter new technology and mechanics that weren't in the original game. This map is so well made that you could easily convince me it belonged in the original campaign. The map creator even took voice lines from the campaign and spliced them to fit the storyline in this map. It looks as if there are combine barricades up ahead. I got almost an hour of play out of this and I highly recommend it. Nexus Incursion. Infiltrate a Combine security outpost to retrieve a top secret disc, and then return it to the start of the level. It's all based around a central courtyard area that's nicely detailed and well thought out. And throughout your mission, you'll be returning to the courtyard many times as new areas are unlocked and additional enemies appear. The theme of infiltrating a security outpost feels legit as you witness NPCs being detained and interrogated inside the outpost. I did get some performance issues in the courtyard sometimes, but nothing too terrible. 
It's a great little combat map, with some pretty challenging moments. I beat it in about 30 minutes. Inhumane is unique among the other maps we're featuring today, because while most of the other maps are simply about combat, Inhumane tells a unique narrative as you play. And that narrative is told without dialogue. You'll see a story unfold based on what you observe on your journey. And the tale this map tells can be a little disturbing, but it's incredibly well told and it totally took me in. Of course there is combat, but it's a little slower and more spread out, so you'll have time to observe and take in the story elements. That's all that I want to say without spoiling it. It's best if you experience it yourself. Playtime is about half an hour. The combine still up the exit in here. I'm getting it back open and getting out of here. You're looking a bit ticked off the closer you get. Do hurry though. In Quick Stop, Alex is forced to abandon her stolen car to travel on foot to hopefully bypass a monolithic combine security checkpoint. And if she's lucky, Russell will arrange transportation on the other side. And speaking of Russell, the map author did a great job of repurposing voice lines from the main campaign to fit the situations in this map. Ooh. It is dark. Big fan of this flashlight. The well-placed voice acting is a nice polishing touch. This miniature campaign has some of the most fresh level designs that I've seen. The level is constantly changing and you never know what's around the corner. As such, there's a surprising amount of variety in the environments. You'll have to traverse spooky underground hallways, city streets, rooftop battles, and more. I had a great time playing this, and I think it's a must download. You can beat it in about 30 minutes. Belamorskaya Station is the scariest Half-Life Alex mod I've played so far. It was so scary that I couldn't finish it. What makes this especially terrifying is that you aren't given gravity gloves. That combined with very limited ammo and visibility means that you're forced to explore dark areas more than you would have if you had gravity gloves. This is incredibly well made, and if you like classic survival horror games, then it's a must play. Overcharge is just a good solid map. Dynamically laid out levels with ever-changing scenery, and a full, rich setting that makes the city feel alive. This is also a resin hunter's dream come true. There's tons of hidden resin, and oftentimes you'll get a tease of resin locations in sections you have yet to visit. This is one of the most fun maps to just scavenge and look for hidden goodies, and it's all capped off by intense combat fighting at the end. It's a great all-around map, and you can get about 40 minutes of playtime out of it. Shakedown. Escape from an apartment building by descending down to the parking garage and taking the elevator. Sounds simple enough, but it will not be easy. There's a couple of spooky parts, and if you hate poison headcrabs as much as I do, then you'll definitely get some scares out of this. But the final battle of this map is, thus far, the most difficult combine fight I've ever faced. So even though this is technically one of the smallest maps on this list, I think it feels much longer than it is, because I died so much at the final battle. It took me about 30 minutes to beat. Police Station Raid has you starting out in the sewers, and you need to find your way to the local Combine Station to infiltrate and cause mayhem. The first part in the sewers was actually kind of spooky, but once you're in the station, it's intense combine action. If you're looking for a big, prolonged challenge, then this map is for you. I beat it in about 20 minutes. Survival Waves is a small, but well thought out wave shooter survival mode. You know the drill with these modes. Waves of Combine are out to get you, and you need to survive for as long as you can. 
In between waves, crates are dropped with ammo, better guns, and resin for upgrades. There's an indestructible TV that shows your wave progress and how much resin you've earned. I found this pretty challenging because the combine come at you from three different directions and there's explosive barrels all over the place, so it's easy to die quickly. For a small but well designed survival mode, check it out. Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. See ya!